Welcome to this tutorial for Doink.com. You're going to use Doink to create a math project using a shape and showing that shape work through a translation, a rotation, a reflection, and the changing of a size. So how are you going to do that? You're going to use the art tools up here at the top. So I'm going to grab the brush. When you go into the brush area, when you click on brush, you get the choice of, of some different brush styles. Make sure you choose normal just for a normal brush. You can also adjust the size of the brush with this little slider. You can pick a color from your color palette over here. So let's say I make this red. And I'm going to draw a triangle as my shape. You can also use, there are some shapes here in the shape tool. There's a square rectangle shape and then there's also a, a circle shape. So if you wanted to draw that shape on screen and, and use that to animate, you could too. Alright, so let's say as an example my first thing I want to show is rotation. I'm going to click on the text tool. And I'm going to put, I'm going to label this on screen so that as the action is occurring, I show that this is for the rotation. So I've added some text. Now, once you draw on the screen, these, the things you draw or the text you put on here, they all become objects. This very first tool up here with the little squares with the uh, dots around it, that is the transform tool. Once you have an object on screen, you can click on the transform tool and you can transform or move or do whatever to that object. It becomes a free floating object. So when I click on it, I can grab a corner, I can make that shape or that drawing bigger or smaller. I can move text around as well. Same thing, I can expand the text or shrink it by grabbing a corner. So that is my very first slide. Now with this being an animation program, you want to set your first slide. And then once the first slide is set, you're going to use this timeline area down here at the bottom. So here's my very first cell that I was drawing. And you can see there's time code across the top. When you go to your first frame, there's a little arrow here. There's a little X and a little arrow. Little X will delete that frame. Little arrow will duplicate the frame. So I'm going to duplicate the frame. And now I'm working in my second frame. So if I'm going to show a rotation, I want to show that this object in the next frame rotates just a little bit. So I'm going to click on the object. And when I move my cursor onto the edge of the object, near the corner, not exactly on the corner, but just off the corner, the object changes to a little rotating circle. So that means you can click and drag and rotate that object just a little bit. Now the nice thing with this is when you rotate the object, in the background it leaves a little shaded uh, picture of whatever is occurring in the previous frame. So this helps with the animation so then when I duplicate and rotate the next one it shows the action that's going to occur frame to frame. So I'm going to duplicate, rotate, so on and so forth. You're going to do this to get as much of a rotation as you want to show. And it's a good idea at the end to put a few frames of the same thing with it in its finished position. So let's say this was the finished position that I got to. I'm going to duplicate and put just a few of these in a row just so that when I animate this and I go back and I, I click in the timeline back at the beginning where the little triangle, the triangle shows up wherever you click. I'm going to click back at the beginning and I'm going to click play and it shows the rotation occurring. And so I leave those few frames in there so that it kind of settles showing that the rotation is complete. You can change the speed of this. I'm on normal speed. You can change to medium or slow. So I think medium is good. So that's my first, uh, my first action that I'm going to show for this shape. Now after that you can add some more frames. You could take out the text. Maybe I'll leave a frame with no text just to show that it changes to something else. I'll put some text in, maybe make it green, and now I'm going to show a translation. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger, and I'll leave it up here. So I'm going to add some more frames. So in this frame, I'm translation, I'm going to show it moving across the screen. I'm going to move it a little bit more so there I can see that that's occurring. Once you start to get off the screen to the side here, Make sure that you use the scroll bar to properly get back to the frame that you're trying to work in. So right now I added a frame, but notice it's off screen, so I have to use the scroll bar to scroll over. And I'll move this up here. So I'm showing a translation of the object, just moving all over the screen. So uh, that is the basics of, of what you're going to do. And follow up, your teacher will tell you uh, exactly what they expect, if you, how many of these you should do in your animation. While you're working, you're going to use the little drop-down menus in the browser screen, this little file menu. Make sure you save and save often. 
You can also see the project over here on the side and notice it's untitled. If I put my mouse cursor over it, I can give it a name. I'm going to call this Math 2 because I was playing earlier and made a Math 1 that I'll show in a minute. Once you're done and, and you're ready to share this with your teacher, you can click Publish. When you click Publish, it takes you to the Publish screen. You can give a title to this, so you can title it if you want to throw your name in there. Just use your first name if you're going to do that. Uh, we'll say Chris is my name, Chris is Shapes. And you can give a description. And this is very important. You're going to add a tag to this for whatever teacher you have. The reason you're adding a tag is when the teacher goes to grade this, they can just go to the site and, and type in the tag and see all the students work at the same time if all the students have the same tag. So let's pretend I'm in Mrs. Knackle's class. I'm going to label this Knackle and I'm going to put 10 because this is the year 2010. So I'm going to put Knackle 10 as my tag. Please make sure you type that correctly and that should be the only tag that you put in there. As far as privacy, put anyone can see this and then go ahead and click finish publishing and that will publish your work and then your teacher can grade it and you have completed your project. Thanks for watching.